What is going on my lines? Welcome. Today is Wednesday and I'm super excited because we're going to talk about what products and categories to avoid when selling on Amazon FBA because the point of this is to make profit, not lose money. So if you're wondering what to avoid and you've had this question all along, this is it guys. Watch this video till the end because I'm going to reveal the top six categories or product lines that you never want to sell in. Okay. So before we get into it, I want to thank you guys for your viewership, really appreciate everything and your support. So if you have any specific questions in mind or topics in mind that you would like me to cover, drop it in the comments below and let me know. Okay, back into it. So now um, there are tons of products that we want to sell on Amazon that are profitable, of course, with the product research methods that I've shown you guys. But there are certain products that you want to avoid at 100% of time like you don't want to sell these products at all because there is going to be losses there is going to be profit loss there's going to be like inventory costs there's going to be all kinds of stuff that really will eat into your profit and at the end of the day you're not going to make money okay and we're here to make money okay number one glass products so anything that you can think of that has a glass in it that is fragile so basically products that are fragile I always tend to stay away from those things because what happens is as you know in shipping right those products tend to break easily and you're gonna just, let's say you're doing uh, an order of um, uh, 500 vases right uh, you want to sell vase uh, you're or you've ordered you've ordered your inventory and out of the 500 like 50 to 100 is broken right now all of a sudden and not only you have cleaning costs but you also have like now you have lost inventory um, you've lost the, basically the manufacturing cost that you provided, the shipping and all that. That's lost money. That's going to eat into your profit. And that's why we always, always 100% of the time want to avoid. Now, if there is something that you really, really want to sell, I would suggest that don't do it when you're a beginner because you want to get experience with what kind of freight you need to do, what kind of packaging you need to do with your manufacturer and what kind of stuff basically the ins and outs of things before you can actually sell those kinds of products. Now, if you have a manufacturer that has a really good packaging, because that really becomes handy when you're handling fragile products, right? That the packages are really good, then okay. But as a first time seller, and this video is basically to warn you guys as first time sellers not to sell these products. Now, mind you, you can sell this down the road. Yeah, you will make money, but you gotta do it the right way. But for now, avoid it 100% of time, okay? So glass products is on my number one list. Second thing, patented products, right? For obvious reasons. Actually, that should be number one because if a product is patented, like I've done the video before this, you cannot sell that product because if you get caught, you're gonna get sued. And if you get sued, you're gonna pay big penalties. Depending on the laws of the country and where the patent is held and all that kind of stuff, I would be very careful and I know a lot of you guys sell in North America so patents are something that is really really strict here and the penalties are hefty so I never would want you guys to get into that kind of trouble because hey it's not fun being sued because now not only you've lost your business right you've lost your motivation to actually make a success out of this because you'll have that fear factor um, contributed to that you will have that fear to sell anything online and uh, guys I'm telling you do not sell patented products and you got to do your research when you're uh, trying to look for patents see if the product that you're trying to sell is actually patented and I've shown you guys how to do it with Google patents I've shown you guys with the United States patent trademark organization and uh, actually on Fiverr there are um, uh, sort of like lawyers that can actually look into this for you guys for a fee and really figure out 100% that if this product is patented or not so you guys don't run into any issue down the road so I highly suggest you watch that video I'll put a link down below for you guys as well so you can take a look at it but yeah guys like avoid patented products at all costs the third one is electronics and I've mentioned this in other videos to you guys that electronics and the reason is the high return rate. Now, if you guys know anything about China, I know that Apple makes their products in China and it's good quality, right? But a lot of these sellers, um, and if you're a small company, you're not gonna have the kind of quality that Apple has. So therefore, you're gonna have a lot of returns. And who pays for returns? Well, none other than the seller itself. So 
you guys are gonna pay for it. You guys are gonna pay inventory costs, you're gonna, you're gonna pay return shipping costs and all that kind of stuff. So for that reason, avoid electronics, avoid products that are really, um, there's a high possibility that quality could be compromised over time. So even if you test out an electronic, you bring in an electronic and you test it out for, let's say like a month or two. What if it breaks down on the third month, right? And if it's a product that you're really trying to promote, that it has a longevity, it has, it has the quality that's gonna last for years to come. Um, electronics, unfortunately, doesn't turn out to be uh, one of the best areas to sell that kind of product in because it is one of those things that from China, you're not gonna find good quality suppliers, or actually I should say great quality suppliers because you'll find good quality, but what does that good quality mean, right? It's only gonna last you a year, maybe a few months. So that's why we always, always try to avoid electronics. And that again, guys, it's only when you're a beginner because once you start getting experience, you know what kind of suppliers to contact. You know who has credibility, you know who has quality. So it's all about gaining experience, just like at a job, right? If you don't have experience in something, you're bound to make mistakes. And that's what I want you guys to avoid is making mistakes about these things. Okay, the next one is products with a lot of variations. I'm talking about products that you can sell and it has like different sizes. So you got small, medium, large, extra large, or you got different colors, like 10 colors. So when you involve products that have a lot of variations, what happens is the chances are that like one or two items in that product line is gonna be popular and you're gonna be stuck with the rest of the inventory. So that's why we never try to sell products that have a lot of variations, just for the simple fact that we're gonna be stuck with inventory and we're not gonna be selling everything. Think about like, um, uh, like a retail store, right? Like you go to a clothing store and what do you see most often that's on sale, right? It's either the extra small t-shirts shirts or the really extra large ones. You never see medium and large on sale or not as much. So that's what I'm talking about. You get stuck with inventory, like that's real life business right in front of you, that that's what happens. So you always, always have to avoid products that have high variations because you're gonna be stuck with it and it's gonna be very frustrating for you guys as a new seller. The next one is products with lithium batteries. Now it goes along with electronics and uh, all that kind of stuff just because electronics need batteries, but Anything that has a lithium battery, if you don't know anything about dangerous goods, guys, shipping is a nightmare. I'm telling you guys, I've been there. You need certifications depending on the country and the freight for it has to be specialized. There's a higher cost for it. There are different kinds of, there's so many moving parts with lithium batteries because they're dangerous. You cannot really like do air freight with them because they have a higher chance of exploding. So all that kind of stuff, really really makes it very complicated for you guys makes it like a lot of hassle to make sure you get all your ducks in a row to um, import uh, products that have lithium batteries in them so that's why I always always tend to stay away from those just for the fact that it's dangerous goods and um, again I never want to bring dangerous goods because you never want to get flagged with customs no matter what you're bringing it for right you never want to get flagged with customs because once you get flagged that's it, you're on file, and it's gonna be a nightmare to bring products into any country, especially US Customs. And if you guys don't know anything about it, there is no way, it's either their way or the highway. So again, guys, avoid lithium batteries. And the last one that is gonna be a bit of a surprise for you guys, because um, it's textiles and apparel. I know a lot of people sell that on Amazon and online and everywhere. But again, guys, it's one of those products that does not allow you to differentiate properly. Yes, you can have different designs on it and different logos and this and that, but it's not a product that you can differentiate easily, right? The quality has to be there. People don't, can't really like feel the quality um, in the, anything that you can buy online. I mean, the prices are very similar across the board. Uh, if you go to a retail store, there are sales happening. It's just really hard to differentiate. There's so much, uh, what do you call, um, short term or very like temporary fashion happening in this world with like uh, retailers like H&M, um, Zara and uh, Walmart that there is a ton of apparel, there's a ton of textiles. And the one number one reason that I 
like not to import the apparel and textiles or get into that kind of business is because of the duty rate. If you guys know, to North America, apparel gets 18% duty rate, which means that if you bring that product into Canada or United States, you're gonna get dinged with 18% duty. Now think about that, right? Now, I know that a lot of other products like steel and stuff like that have been getting 25%, right? Because of the new laws that Trump came out with. But apparel has always been 18% and you want to bring in products that are like 5%, 10%. But 18% is really high, guys. It's really going to eat into your profit and not leave you with anything. Okay, guys, this is it. Um, these are the categories that I always warn my students about that to always avoid as a new seller and you can get into it later I mean if you really want to do it you can get into it later but for now avoid them at all costs let's go through it again so we had glass products we had patented products electronics lithium batteries products with a lot of variations and textiles and apparel okay these are the products you want to avoid or categories you want to avoid when selling on Amazon FBA Thank you guys, I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching. I'm gonna see you guys on Friday with yet another video. And I'm gonna tell you guys why you're gonna be successful on Amazon FBA. Subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and drop your comment below. And that's it, I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one, bye.